After two and a half episodes, a visual blunder comparable to Game of Thrones' infamous coffee cup was finally delivered. How did no one notice? To be fair, the final season of Game of Thrones was marked by a general lack of interest. The storytelling abandoned years of careful world building in favor of a sloppy, meaningless march to a ludicrous finale. In any case, here's what we know thus far. To begin, let's look at an overview of the first CGI clangor of House of the Dragon. A general lack of attention marked the final season of Game of Thrones. It was evident in the storyline, which abandoned years of laborious world building for a gormless clatter towards a foolish conclusion. It was apparent in the creative choices. One episode was so poorly lit that you felt abducted and forced to watch it through a burlap sack. Most notably, it was visible in the coffee mugs. You recall the coffee cup? The elaborate mise-en-scene of a Winterfell set scene in episode 4, titled The Last of the Starks, was broken by the appearance of a modern takeout coffee cup, absent-mindedly placed in front of Daenerys Targaryen. Amelia Clark eventually threw her co-star Conleth Hill under the bus for the gaff, which instantly went viral. In this regard, the upcoming Game of Thrones prequel House of the Dragon has a chance to distinguish itself from its mother series. Its first episode was purposely slow and talky as if to reassure beleaguered Game of Thrones viewers that they would do it correctly this time. Nothing would yank viewers out of the action more egregiously than that awful coffee cup, and every I would be dotted and every T crossed. This went for two and a half fantastic episodes before someone in post-production messed it up spectacularly. Moving on, more specifics on the CGI clangor. One of the show's recurring motifs is that King Viserys, played by Paddy Considine, is so unfit to live as a ruler that the Iron Throne is slowly killing him. He continues nicking himself on its blades, resulting in a slew of festering legions on his body. Viserys lost a pair of fingers to the throne in this week's episode, with the amputated digits erased from Considine's hands courtesy of CGI. So what went wrong? You guessed correctly. Viserys has all of his fingers in one scene this week. Considine is wearing bright green screen gloves in the shot, so this isn't a simple continuity problem. Throughout the rest of the show, visual artists utilize gloves to remove Viserys' fingertips and repaint the background. But for some reason, that did not occur here. Isn't it a source of concern? Everyone engaged in the episode's post-production, editors, producers, visual artists, network executives, saw those fingers, and not a single person detected the error. If they did, we would have known because it would have been so simple to repair. There's a good probability it's already been cleaned up. If you watch House of the Dragon tonight, Viserys' hand will most likely be as twisted and infected as it was supposed to be. However, it is too late. It was caught on the internet. The internet internet, on the other hand, never forgets. Moving on, fans of House of the Dragon are astonished to see an appearance from Gavin and Stacy. We were introduced to the hand of King Sir Otto Hightower's brother, Sir Hobart Hightower, in both the premiere and the most recent installment of the Game of Thrones spin-off, second by the name. The role is played by Stefan Rodri, who also works as Dave Coaches in the hit rom-com Gavin and Stacy. Many fans flock to social media to express their amazement at seeing the actor in his new role, Swamp Dodgems for Dragons. I can't believe we Dave Coaches is wandering about Westeros these days, pretending he doesn't like the Dodgems. Hashtag House of the Dragon, hashtag Gavin and Stacy, wrote one Twitter user. Watching, hashtag House of the Dragon and then go, oh, that's Dave Coaches, wrote another. Watching, hashtag House of the Dragon, or rather, playing What's This Man From, said a third. And appreciating the crossovers of the dad from Fleabag, Dave Coaches from Gavin and Stacy, and the gorgeous twins from Shameless. Stefan is no stranger to fantasy, having appeared in films such as Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows and Wonder Woman. House of the Dragon has aroused increased interest in the Targaryen dynasty, on whom it focuses, but it has also prompted many to take a deeper look at the High Towers. As King Viserys I Targaryen, Paddy Considine, reigns on the Iron Throne, the High Towers wield considerable political power. In addition to being a staunch ally of the Targaryens, the High Towers towers appear to be ambitious in their own right, operating with deception in King's Landing. Following that, House of the Dragon star Steve Toussaint is gutted by his abrupt departure from the Game of Thrones prequel. In a statement, co-showrunner and director Miguel Sapochnik announced his departure from the series at the end of the first
first season. Many fans were disappointed by the announcement, but it appears that it also surprised one of the show's stars, Steve Toussaint. Toussaint, who plays Corliss Valerian on the Game of Thrones prequel series, has spoken out about his response to learning the news. We have this English expression. Got it, he explained. I got a call one night from creator Ryan Condal basically saying, listen, Miguel's exit is about to break. Continuing on the West of Westeros podcast, he said, it was Miguel's decision, but I was disappointed. Steve then told listeners about Miguel's involvement in the overall process of bringing House of the Dragon to our screens. With him, it was full on because he was constant. He had to direct and perform his own portions as well as his own episodes. And then he has to look the other way. After directing legendary episodes such as Hard Home, Battle of the Bastards, and The Winds of Winter, Sapochnik became a household name among Game of Thrones fans. Working inside the Thrones world for the past few years has been an honor and a privilege, especially spending the last two with the incredible cast and crew of House of the Dragon, Sapochnik stated in his farewell statement. Next up, House of the Dragon Episode 4, more secrets about Arya Stark's dagger. We will closely examine the most famous dagger in the entire Game of Thrones House of the Dragon universe. This cat's paw dagger eventually ended up in the hands of Westeros' savior, Arya Stark, Maisie Williams. The clip begins with Princess Rhaenyra, Millie Alcock, straining to read the inscription on the dagger while holding it over searing flames. From my blood comes the prince that was promised, and he will be the song of ice and fire, she interprets. Despite the three-year time leap between the first episode, Heirs of the Dragon, and the upcoming fourth episode, it appears Rhaenyra and her father, Viserys, are still thinking about the prophecy of the prince that was promised. Following that, a demon returns victorious with a new do. In the third episode, titled Second of His Name, Damon defeated the Crab Feeder in the struggle for the Stepstones with help from Corliss Valerian, Steve Toussaint, and Corliss's son, Lenor, Theo Nate. However, the partying appears to have continued after the credits rolled. Damon returns to King's Landing victorious, wearing a crown and sporting a new haircut. He declares himself to be the King of the Narrow Sea, also the title of the fourth episode. And it's a good thing because this scene is significant in Targaryen history. Without going into too much detail, this sequence, Damon returning from the Stepstones, is pivotal in Fire and Blood, the George R. R. Martin novel on which House of the Dragon is based. Finally, fans of House of the Dragon are already devastated by the planned cast change. I'm not ready. House of the Dragon is about to go through a massive casting shuffle that disappointed fans. We only have two episodes left, with Millie Alcock as Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen, before she's replaced by Emma Darcy, when the Game of Thrones prequel time jumps to the middle of the series. All of the younger actors are dropped. Emily Carey, who plays Alison Hightower, now King Viserys' wife, will be replaced by Olivia Cook, while Nana Blondell and John McMillan will be returned as Lyanna and Lenor Valerian. Fans have universally complimented some younger actresses, like Alcock, whose spirited performance as the princess has made for compelling entertainment. While Darcy and Cook will will undoubtedly be outstanding when they finally appear in House of the Dragon's sixth episode. Fans are nonetheless upset at the prospect of leaving the present ensemble behind. Millie Alcock as young Rhaenyra Targaryen is one of the perfect castings ever. I'll never get over it, one fan commented, while another agreed, saying, Rhaenyra Targaryen is a badass heir. I'm not ready to say goodbye to Millie Alcock. Millie Alcock as Rhaenyra Targaryen is exactly correct, said a third fan. She has a regal air and can command a room and fascinate her audience. I will miss her outstanding performance. She served, ate, and left no crumbs. In the most recent episode of House of the Dragon, Viserys and Alicent became parents to a son, the new successor to the throne. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.